KSO Retro is back for Season 2. This time, we take a deep dive into the most memorable Kansas State games dating back to, well, who knows how far back we'll go. Four dudes around a table discussing their shameless love for their Wildcats as they sit back and relive some of the greatest moments uh, maybe in their lives. You bleed purple? Well, you're in the right spot because as I've seen firsthand, John Kurtz, Chris Nelson, and KSU underscore fan, or Jimmy as I like to call him, all bleed that beautiful color too. This week they break down a happy time in Manhattan when a Beasley, Poland, and Walker-led Wildcats hoops team knocked off the Jayhawks for the first time at home in a long time. I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Oh yeah, here's your host, Dale, I mean Matt Hall. Yeah, like Welcome to Kansas Retro Bears, Season Patriots, 2, Giants. Episode 4. You've got a couple of guys trying <laughs> to get Colts ahead, again. talking it's about nice. 2008 Super Bowl, which is not even in the quiz this week, guys. Ooh. There's no Super Bowl in there. KSO Retro, Season 2, Episode 4. I like the intro with the guys talking in the background. That's what happens down here, Flanders, you know? It's a lot of fun. It's our first ever basketball a lot of sports talk. Retro. A lot of sports talk going on here. Yeah. You know, like on the game on 1350 KMAN or <laughs> so, 933 FM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you should definitely listen to 933 or 937. 937 will be go. So this yeah. is the first basketball edition. It is the 2008, 2007, and 8 season played in January 2008 K-State KU game. The first one over the Jayhawks in Bramlage. I was starting to like write my stuff for this and put sins. Like, oh, wait, no. That was the first win over KU in Bramlage, period. So I didn't need to find <laughs> a sense win. We've got John Kurtz with us. We've got Chris Nelson with us. We've got KSU underscore fan. Grant Flanders is running the board. Mason Voth is down here, so he could say some things. Do you guys want to do the game The game first? The quiz game, get out of the way. Like, it's yes. fun. You want to yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, here All it is, guys. It. Every every edition of KSO Retro, we do a quiz <laughs> to take you back to the year 2008. It's been all fan and Kurtz when I had... What? Oh, excuse, no. me, what? excuse me, excuse me. That's a mistake. I slipped up. There's been all Nelson. <laughs> I will readily say all, I've been terrible all at the quiz. Uh, the disrespect. Man. man. Fan, <laughs> uh, fan not great. Flanders replaced him once. Did not score. So... <laughs> Holy, <laughs> shut him out. Here's the wow. thing. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to do the quiz, <laughs> Fan. I'm going to have to ask Fan to close his computer, or at least get rid of it. And I don't want Nelson looking at a computer. I don't want anybody looking at answers. Perfect. I see it. Cartier Jada, Duncan against KU. So, 10 questions to determine the king of 2008, which is the year of this K-State KU basketball game we're talking about. All 10 questions come from the game. Come Ooh. from the K-State KU basketball Ooh, game in 2008. So, you will all get a chance to answer every question. You can all score on the same thing. We'll go around. I'll switch to order once in a while. If I sense somebody's just copying off of somebody, I might even <laughs> ding a point. I don't know. All right, guys. Question one. 2008 K-State KU. K-State had four players in double figures in that game. Three of them are pretty gosh darn obvious, and you guys all remember. Don't tell me that. Who was the fourth leading scorer for K-State against KU? Mm. He was their fourth player in double figures. I'm going to start. Gosh, I always want to make you guys like, because some of you know it and some of you don't. Kurtz, I'm going to make you answer first. And I'm going to time you down after like five seconds. Fourth leading score for this game. I'll start counting down now. Five, four. Clint Stewart. Three. Okay, he says Clint Stewart. Clint Stewart. Nelson says Clint Stewart. Fan. I'm going to say Blake Young. Oh, I can't believe this fan is off to a zero point start. <laughs> Clint, Stewart. Yeah, Clint Stewart is the correct answer. Clint Stewart, fourth leading scorer in this game. He, but see, I respect he wasn't just copying, you know, like Nelson did. Nelson had no idea who it was. So I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, I was here ready to answer right. before. Closest gets the points on this. If anybody gets it exactly right, I might do crazy points. Fan goes first. What was the score at halftime of this contest? Oh, great question. Ooh. KSU underscore Man. fan. I'll start counting you down here in five, four. I'm going to say 40 to 37. 40 to 37. Who is ahead? Fan? Could I don't be remember. K State. I don't remember, <laughs> if, we were, <laughs> I don't remember if we were ahead or not. I should. I'm going to say KU is it. Okay, he's got it 40 37 KU lead. Nelson? I'm going to go 38 36 cats. Okay, we got 38 36. Nelson says. Kurtz. I'll take uh, 39-35 K-State. Nelson gets three points for hitting it on the dot. It was 38-36 K-State at halftime. Are you serious? Nice. You knew That's that? Exactly right. It's what's on that computer, uh, Flanders. Nelson. <laughs> Is he cheating? You know I'm not. I'm okay, okay, okay. Question, question three as we stay. We're all again. 2008 K-State KU. 
We're going to start with Nelson this time. K State had two players tie for their leading rebounding total was six. Six rebounds was the leading rebound total for K State. One was Michael Beasley. Who was the other, Nelson? Six rebounds for K State that night. So we're counting down to five, four. Dominique Sutton. Nelson says Dominique Sutton. Fan, you're up next. That's right. Oh, he is. I'm gonna say Darren Kent. We have a Darren Kent, Dominique Sutton, Kurtz. What do you got? Six boards. Who got beat? You got six boards with bees. I think I think Sutton. I'd go Sutton. I mean, of course it is. It's Dominique Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. I mean, one vote for <laughs> Kurtz yes. and for Nelson. Oh, this is a good gosh. time. Now, listen. If you guys start to get some That's of these some gamesmanship right, from Nelson over there, I'll be a little surprised. These are some tricky ones. Okay, those were tricky. These are tricky. Who made the first basket of the game? Starting with John Kurtz. Mm, I feel like Kansas, Kansas have a dunk. Uh, Brand, Brandon Rush. He says Brandon Rush. Nelson Brandon says Rush. Set and says Brandon Rush. Brandon Rush. Brandon Rush is correct. Everyone gets the answer. Was it a dunk? It was a three-pointer three oh, from okay. Brandon Rush. How about here we go again? Yep, three nothing. <laughs> three nothing. Three nothing. <laughs> it's That's over. my thought. Anytime KU scores in <laughs> um, it's not on here, but Casey did respond with a three. Clint Stewart on the next basket. No, All right, guys, who it's made not the correct? Who made Bill the, Walker? Made it was Bill Walker. Sorry. Clinster yeah. had a second three. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm giving Fan a point for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> Who made the last shot of the game? The last field goal field made goal. of the game. We'll start with Nelson, Fan, then Kurtz. Was it Bill Walker's dunk? Uh, could have been. I don't know. But that's that's that <laughs> could be the answer. Do you have a different answer or Bill Walker? I think it was Bill Walker. We have two Bill Walker answers <clears throat> to Kurtz. This is a way to steal it. Or maybe they're right. And you stick with him. Who knows? Who knows, Kurtz? Uh, I felt like that dunk wasn't it. Give me Mario Chalmers. None of you are right. Mm. Kurtz was the closest to being right. The correct answer was Sharon Collins made mm. a two-point shot. Mm. Uh, last made basket of the game. Starting with Kurtz, what was the largest lead of the game for K-State? Closest gets the point. Mm. Anybody yeah. who's exact, again, maybe I'll hook you up. <laughs> largest lead, Kurtz. Let's say like... 13. He has 13 point lead. Nelson thinks, like, Nelson likes that. He thinks it's close, no, but he's not sure it's right. Uh, 12. Nelson says 12. Fan, you can. I was thinking, I was thinking 12 also. Okay, so the answer, correct answer is exactly 12. Oh, um, since two people got it, I will give them both two points, but not three points since two of them got it. Kurtz, 13 by yourself. That's a good guess. To start off with 13, like, you had nothing to be ashamed of, okay? How many three pointers, though, fan? How many three pointers did Henry Walker attempt in this game? Ten. Fan says ten. He said it with confidence too. Kurtz, did Bill Walker? How many threes did he take in this game? Probably too many. Um, <laughs> I'll say seven. Nelson, eight. Tell you what. Fan is all of a sudden all the way back in this thing. It was exactly 10 three point attempts <laughs> wow. from Bill Walker. <laughs> Took 10 threes in that game. Like, holy cow. Well, he, he banked one in. Why yeah. wouldn't you keep shooting? <laughs> yeah. 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 And he made the first one. Next question, all about the threes here, guys. Going to lead off with Nelson, then Kurtz, then Fan this time. Nelson Kurtz, Fan. How many three pointers did Michael Beasley make in this game? Four. Nelson says four. Kurtz. Does Nelson even know what he's talking about? I'm going to say three. Three. Fan? I think it's four also. Four is the correct answer on the dot. <laughs> Out of four attempts. Uh, yeah, exactly. Four. He went four for four. I think Walker went really? four for ten. Beasley three, went, three for ten. Three for ten. And Beasley went four for four. Man, two and people I'm got that looking. exactly right. Again, I'm going to give two points for the exact right answers. How about bonus points for the number of attempts? Oh, sorry. I mean, that's pretty good. It's about the volume well, I could add, earlier, too. <laughs> I could add that many Bill Walker made. Yeah. Okay, guys. Two questions left. Let me give you some scores. Fan has got six. Kurtz only has three. That feels low. I'm going to give him another one for doing, <laughs> yeah. doing a good job. What? I just think he's done a good job. I don't know how to say it. Like, I think he's done a good job. Nelson has two, four, five, six, nine, ten. So Kurtz has four. Nelson has ten. Fan has six. So we can see what happens here. How many more questions? Two questions left, but I might give you never have any points given out for these. Hey, I you might have know. a bonus one. You know, maybe boy, bonus question from Mason might be necessary. All right, we're gonna go Fan, Nelson, Kurtz in this order. I don't need the score necessarily. 
Who was the opponent and the result of K State's next game after this? Oh. <sighs> Well, yeah, you go last. You up. slow down. You seem like very confident, though. Fan, do you know what happened after this We game? lost at Missouri. He says a loss at Mizzou. Nelson, do you know what happened? <sighs> uh, I'll go with Fan. Lost at Mizzou. Yeah, they, they lost at Mizzou after Stefan Hanna got suspended for, like, punching somebody over some mm. wings at a bar. Mizzou was out, like, <clears throat> half their team. That's right. And we freaking and, lost at Mizzou. And Frank decided to sort of suspend Jacob Pullen. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Jacob Pullen played like five minutes after he was great against Kansas. Fascinating. I'm going to give two points apiece to Fan and Kurtz for clearly knowing it. Nelson just riding coattails. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can tell the way, he, the, way he, the way he answered. You're still in a significant lead. Okay. Yeah. Last question. By the way, screw Stefan Hanna for Stephane not coming. Stefan Hanna. Yeah. Yes. If only we could close, right? You know? I mean, <laughs> like Bob, Bob Huggins could never close. Bob Huggins could close. <laughs> hey, what was the score of the previous win over Kansas? The exact score of the previous win over Kansas. Not going to make you go first because you're shaking your head. Kurt, so so you're saying 2006 in Lawrence. What okay. Oh, game. 59-55. Yeah. 59-55, I knew that. Yeah, correct. 59-55. Yeah. Yeah. You guys didn't know the previous win over Kansas? They don't I did. Yeah, that's what I gave them the game clue. The oh. No. You acted like you didn't know over there. Well, not at first. Well, I, I mean, I would have gotten, I just wanted to clarify, like, last home win, like, what what were we I'm talking I'm giving about? y'all one point for that because everyone, whatever, y'all knew it. Y'all knew I'll never it. forget that score. Uh, yeah, I was, I was there and I was pretty happy. Well, guys, there's no need for a bonus question. It is what it is. Nelson... I mean, Nelson rolls to victory. KU couldn't defend that creative what? motion offense that Wooly installed that year. What, what's true? <laughs> it's it flex. You want to hear what I had down the what pipe? Would, what would you have? Are you got a mic right now? I, I can take you. Just, just yell. Okay. Yeah, just hey, I was going to say, who can name the two guys that were on the ESPN Plus broadcast that night? Dave, Arms, Split or, Dave Armstrong. And Dave Armstrong. Split. Boom. Yeah. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. Okay. I thought that the Paul Splitorf one would maybe be a little weird, but. Split was good. It's a little so, the game's over. Nelson wins. We've already talked a lot of K-State KU from 2008, thanks to that. I want to talk about the game, though, just in general, before we get to the questions. I- I'm going to admit something as we start this one. This is probably the most famous K-State game of, you know, the modern era in football and basketball that I basically have no personal recollection of, <laughs> which is really, really strange, of course. I was at Rivals in Nashville at this point. I mean, we're working in the office that night. You have to have somebody available on the site to like build stories for both Yahoo and Rivals or whatever. And we were actually being like really busy. Like I had big stories I had to build for the next morning. So I had this game on on our big TV in the office, but I remember barely, barely getting to watch it, just seeing the final score. And like then thinking, I, I've gone to a million K-State KU basketball games. I used to tape every game in Bramlage from when I was a little kid, or just in the hopes that K-State could win one. I wanted that tape so I could talk trash on people with it. And as soon as I move, like they beat KU in Bramlage. And I was almost like a little bit sad and offended that night. So I had a different experience, you know, than most. I was very happy, but man, like, so that's part of the reason I'm excited to do this is because most of these games we talk about, I've watched it a thousand times or I was there or both. This one is not. Like, I know what happened. I know the score. I know who had big games. I know the highlights. I know the videos, but I wasn't there. I didn't live it. So I want to go through that with you guys first. So John Kurtz first. Can you just tell me like what, when we just said we're doing this game, what did you think? And then just walk through your, your day, your night at that oh. game. I want to hear about it, Kurt. Come okay. on. Okay, well, I can definitely do that. So I was a freshman in college. and uh, Super cool. I, yeah, I got there. It's, uh, <laughs> so the gates to the parking lot were supposed to open, I think, at 6. We got there at like 5.15, 5.30, and there were already a ton of people literally like hiding in the bushes nearby so that they could just like sprint up once they... That's clever, Actually right? lifted the gates and stuff. So we got there at 5.30. We were pretty... I mean, we were close to the front in the line, but so many people... It was not very well organized that year. So many people came in like with their friends and cut in front. At getting there at 5.30, I sat in like the 23rd row or something. Now, I was in the center section centermost section so good seats they, i mean they were fine but i wanted like front row i mean i was like pissed i mean we got up at the crack of dawn to get out and there you were and, gonna talk some noise <laughs> right I mean, oh funny like, story so the night before uh was when i got brandon rush's phone number from the message boards i think that was back in the ksu made the first phase. shot yeah yeah well you, brandon rush picked up the phone i called brandon rush <laughs> the night before picked up the phone and he goes hello and i was like <laughs> uh, 
is this Brandon? I was like, yeah. I was like, Michael Beasley's going to curb stomp you tomorrow. <laughs> and I literally, I remember Brandon Rush said to me directly, he goes, oh, man, he's just one player. We got a whole team. And then I was just like, I don't know what to say. Like, he just checkmated me. I never he, expected this to be like a conversation right, about the game right. tomorrow. And then I hung up, and that was it. You were hoping he responded, oh, no, you're probably right. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. He just no, said, but he, like, came back with what was a logical argument, and I didn't know what to do. He's like, we're undefeated in the number one team in the country. <laughs> we're going to be fine. Yeah. 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 So, uh, anyway, yes, I wanted to, like, talk trash to Brandon Rush. But, yeah, man, I mean, once the game got started, like, yeah, that was one of the happiest days of my life at that time. Um, I, I just remember when Bill Walker banked in the three. That was like when I knew it was real. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is going to happen, man. Um, and I just remember like there was I had this old flip phone where I had a picture of me like on it's the like court. like a Kyo, Kyocera or anything? Like it, yeah, it was Nokia, green. I think maybe like a Nokia flip phone Those or something. Nice. But I had this picture of me like, you know, selfie style, like on the court where I just had the biggest like. <laughs> S eating grin on my face ever, and I wish I still had that picture somewhere. Um, because yeah, that was that was Do you a great still talk night. to Brandon Rush. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny story, Mason, were you there? Was that still Tyler when I was, I... I was there? Okay, I, Tyler was still there, but I was there for that show. I'm gonna go statue of limitations, maybe like please, nobody get me in trouble for this. I think technically, this might have been. <laughs> Let me just tell you the story. <laughs> I think you're gonna have to. So, yeah. like, when was that? Maybe a year ago. It was like a random summer day, and Brandon Rush got brought up. And I was actually talking about how, of all the KU players, especially on that team, I actually found Brandon Rush kind of likable. He was pretty quiet. Um, Shocking. Kurtz loves Brandon Rush. <laughs> I just, I, I didn't hate him, and I, I thought he was like, he actually, didn't rush the judgment. Yeah. Seemed like a decent dude. I mean, I called his freaking phone, and Talked he was all the time. nice enough to me. So uh, that got brought up, and I was like, you know what? Like, I've still got his phone number. Like, let's just call him. I pulled out my phone number and like or my phone and like stuck it against the mic and he picked up and was like, "Hello?" and I was like, "Again, a radio <laughs> professional, I didn't know what to do." He's totally unready for and Brandon. And I was Rush. just like, "Hey, Brandon, um I'm on the radio right now. I just want to tell you like uh I've been a K-State fan my whole life, like I hate KU, but like I thought you were a pretty <laughs> decent dude." And he was just like, "Oh, thanks, man." And then it like all clicked. I was like, I don't know if I should be doing this. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go, man. And then I hung up and I was like, burn the tape. Like, don't ever let that see. You were desperately day. thinking like, remember that time you said your team was going to was going to beat my team that I cheer for? Well, guess what, Brandon? You didn't. You no, but see, the point of this call was that I was going to be nice to because I was telling him like. Because all you've done is be mean to him. We were life. well, we were just talking about like how he was a likable guy, even though he played for KU. And so anyway. It's a good story. I'm just being difficult because yeah. that's my job as host. Nelson, I heard your story a little before we started tonight, but tell it again because I bet the listeners haven't heard it and it's pretty funny. They have not. And yeah, it was started out a disappointing evening for me, so obviously very excited for this game. Um, a fairly well-known basketball GA at the time um, lived with me, was my roommate, and so he put me on the pass list for all the K-State games. What a but, guy. Yeah, nice guy. He was a nice guy. Very nice guy. So I go up to the, the past list and tell her my name, and poor lady looks down through the list and says, <laughs> I don't see your name on here. So I tell her, well, look in the C's. Maybe you put my first name and last name. She did that. I think I told her like three or four times to double check, and she's probably thinking, no matter how many times I look at this list, your name is not going to be on there. So he forgot to put my list out, my name on the list with all the stuff going on that week. Understandably so. So I walked home, well, the, walked to my car with my tail between my legs, and very very upset so i went home <laughs> watched it on tv by myself surprised i didn't get a noise complaint called on me because i was going absolutely berserk in my living room did you convince yourself that like you not being there somehow helped them win i'm sure yes. you did okay I, yeah. 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 So if i would have been there we would have lost so yep. in the end i was happy about it and yeah during the game just my impressions was you know obviously ku's through the years had much better pure basketball players than us, but athletically, there were so many years we didn't belong to the same court right. as them, and this definitely was not the case in this game. I mean, I remember Dominique Sutton early in the game had a block, and then he had a left-handed tip in where he just flew through the lane like, my lord, we, we're athletic. Team we leading six rebounds in that tip in. That's right. You know? So, yeah, I think we out-rebounded him when they had Cole Aldridge mm -hmm. and Darrell Arthur and Darnell Jackson and just loads of guys inside. We were just quicker to the ball and wanted it, and yeah, it was a fun night. 
by myself in my house. I, mean, I looked through the box for some earlier and failing to all this, but I think Casey out rebounded him, mm-hmm. shot it better, shot it better from three, had fewer turnovers. I mean, really did a lot of the things that lead you winning a basketball game. Uh, fan, same kind of question, but I, I, I like to hear you go on about it because, again, I wasn't there. I want to hear about experiences. What was your, like, did, were you there? Did you watch it on TV? What are your just memories? Talk about this, talk through this day and the celebration with, no, I, with me. I was there. I think my wife and I got season tickets just be, the year before with Huggins, and then we kept them, and we were, like, way up in the corner of Section 15, 16, something way up in that corner. Yeah. Um, for for whatever reason, this my wife couldn't go to this game, so I invited a guy I knew from church, and he really wasn't a K State fan, so it wasn't. Could have been Nelson. It wasn't it quite, Nelson and season. it could have been Nelson. <laughs> but then we would. I'm lost. glad I invited him because he was a good guy. But part of me looking back is like I, I, it would have been much more fun to experience right. this with a, another K State fan. Now I will say the crowd was, you know, probably as good as I ever remember of any crowd in Bramlage. There was real anticipation. I mean, at KU was rolling. I mean, they were beating teams by 20 points. They were, under, were they undefeated? They were undefeated. They were undefeated, right? They, they had won, I think, seven of their previous eight games by 20-plus. Um, and we had, you know, K-State had had a good season at that point and was playing well at that time. But we still lost to George Mason and Oregon and Notre Dame early in that year. So, But the way K-State was playing leading up, I think that we had won – they won their first Six four row. Big Twelve games, right? Yeah, so. yeah. So first five, big, or first four, yeah. So we were we had won five in a row and had beat Savannah State by fifty, <laughs> no sixty, eighty five twenty five, <laughs> which was ridiculous. Eighty five to twenty five, not showing, their, 25. Not showing yes. their face in the octagon <laughs> to do again. I'll tell you that much. But anyway, we had, <laughs> with there was real confidence that th- this would be the year. I mean. He, as an optimistic K State fan, I kind of had that every year, but this time we had Michael Beasley, we had Bill Walker, we had players that could play, and like kind of like Nelson said, athletically, we were pretty equal to what they were that year, uh, for that game especially, and it was just exhilarating to watch and see that win. I'm going to start reading off some of the memories from the message board on the foundation and get your guys' comments. Before I do, I'm just going to rattle off some of the stats we were talking about, and I've already referenced uh, Bill Walker, who I love on ESPN's stat sheet, is still listed as H. Walker, you know, for Henry Walker, yes. which mm-hmm. is fantastic. 22 points, five boards. Uh, he was 3 of 10 from 3, as we noted, but 9 of 18 overall. So very efficient on the two-point shots. If my math serves correctly, Michael Beasley played only played 25 minutes, Bill Walker did in this game. Uh, three personal fouls. Beasley played 38 minutes, had 25 points, six boards. He was 9 of 18, 4 of 4. Uh, so, obviously very, very good. Uh, Jacob Poland was the guy, you know, I mean, I think who – he had already played well at times as a freshman. It wasn't like he came out of nowhere. But didn't start, played 28 minutes, got 20 points, 10 of 10 from the foul line, 2 of 5 from 3. So you have three guys go for 20-plus. All three are freshmen, you know, as well. And, of course, we know that some of those guys, even at the time, you knew Beasley and Walker were going to move on. It wasn't going to be four years of these guys. But – for Kansas, nobody hits the 20-point mark. Mario Chalmers led the way for them with 19 points, 5-9 and nine shooting. He played 30 minutes. Brandon Rush, John Kurtz's best friend, played a team-high 37 minutes, had seven boards. <laughs> Kurtz really rattled him. He had a team-high in <laughs> points and rebounds. He scored 15 points. He was 6 of 10 from the floor, and he turned it over twice in 37 minutes against four assists. So, Kurtz. Brandon Rush, despite your best efforts, uh, he showed up for this game. Okay, well, someone needs to look up the box score from the 2010 Mizzou game at home and see what Michael Dixon did, because I tell you what, hey, rattled that guy, too. I have I have no doubt that you did, man. I mean, I think you you, you probably, if not for the, not for what you did, Rush probably goes for 30, and who knows what yeah, happens. So exactly. I'm going to read Welcome. through some of these some stops. of these memories. A couple of curb stops. <laughs> Shu says, I was in rural Scotland. I read this like three times. Like... <laughs> So many thoughts about this, you know, like one, that's really cool, but two, but two, like, is the rule part necessary? I mean, like, just saying, like, just tell me, just tell me you're in Scotland. I feel like it's, every part of Scotland. I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess me. you know, but I just, I'm being really nitpicky in this post because, but I, it was, I was in rural Scotland on business and woke up at 4 a.m. and had to know what happened. The GPC, of course, that was the site back then, refreshed to a screen of a massive celebration. 
and I sit up until breakfast, read about the game. I never forgot that. Do you guys remember what you did as you know, uh, as fans? Because you were like you said, you were a student at that point, right? Mm-hmm. You remember how you like how you took this in as fans? Did you go to the message boards? Was Twitter big enough back then? I don't even remember. Like, what did you do? Did you go party that night? Like, how did you celebrate this win? Definitely went back to uh, Delta Sig. And oh, the old Delta we Sig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Played, some, played some drinking games, popping collars. <laughs> well, I, I mean, basically. <laughs> basically, that's exactly what we did. Drunk now uh, the basketball players. No, I do I do remember, like, Talk really, trash. I oh, really I wanted, I, I very much wanted to go back and watch, like, the, I think I recorded it uh, somehow, yeah. however the hell you did it in 2007. And I really wanted to go back and watch it, but like all my friends were like, what, what, you, "You just saw the game, dude. What do you want?" And I'm like, <laughs> and "You're trying to act like you're cool enough to where like, oh, you're right. I don't need to <laughs> right, do right. But in the like, back of oh, your mind, yeah. all you want to do, yeah, is all watch I wanted to do is watch, <laughs> is watch yeah. that game again. Yep. <laughs> Nelson, you could come over because I did rewatch it <laughs> at home by myself, I mean, and I think I was on the message boards probably <laughs> perusing online and yeah, soaking it all in. Yeah. Fan, anything unique? Any unique memories? S- same the friend thing. who was I, with you, not a big fan. You probably yeah, talked I mean, about I, it in the car. I took. Yeah, I mean, we, we, I, that's the other thing I regret is I, I didn't go down the floor because, like, I, this guy doesn't want to go down the floor. <laughs> and plus, we were way up high. But I think I took the guy home and then I stayed up reading stuff online. And I mean, it was just to read about us beating them convincingly, basically. And I, I remember screenshotting like every ESPN yeah. and CBS Sports and every site that was out there and then just posting with. K State fans or KSU fans, whatever it was at the time. I, I remember for me, obviously it was a night game during the week. So like I remember by the time it had game had wound down, I was pretty much done with my my work. And so like I remember watching it was really surreal to watch like at Leeds Sports Center, you know, mm-hmm. without even really know like I knew they won. I saw the I saw the finish live. Like I stopped and saw the finish live. But I didn't follow, like I kept saying. So it was surreal to watch Sports Center lead off with K State and KU and to have the story Told, more told you for the first time about how K-State beat him. So, yeah, it was a really, really cool night. Um, D. Fleur says he just turned 16. So you were 18-ish, 19? Yeah, 18. So similar age. Said had, he had his girlfriend, who was a KU fan, over to watch the game. Winning caused our first fight. I almost read that his fist fight, which is not funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I read it as I thought, geez, Boy. Louise. I, I thought it was supposed to be a joke. Whew, I thought, funny, right. It's not a time for this. But I, he says, but I didn't care. I remember the attitude in the hall at school the next day. I'm not the type to talk a bunch of trash, but I most definitely had a swagger in my step. I just remember how great it felt to finally have the best player on the court. We didn't win because of some gimmick or because they were finally terrible. It just felt like for the first time in my lifetime, we were the more athletic, played better team, had an unstoppable force in Beasley and a future goat in Jacob Pullen. It's all it's all what you kind of talked about. I mean, yeah. not you it, it, you beat a really good KU team for mm-hmm. one. You won the national championship, yeah. right? Yeah. You beat a really good yeah. team KU team for one, like you said. K State was the K State was the better, more gifted team that night. Yeah, and Michael Beasley's hands were just unreal. When he got his hands on a rebound, he I mean, he could just snatch that thing and pull him late in the game, handling their pressure was was impressive, you know, for a freshman guy. You've seen so many times. Heck, Javon Carter for West Virginia. How many yep. times did he melt down against KU's? Pressure? Every time. <laughs> Every for, time. Why did you bring that up? I get so mad. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, my oh my gosh. I wonder what Javon Carter's career shooting percentage <laughs> against KU in the last few minutes of a game is. I bet he's a combined like Zero. one of ninety-seven from an average distance of twenty-four feet. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. With twelve turnovers and no assists. <laughs> And no wins. Uh, let's am I, see. Am I, uh, Javon Carter was uh, Proviso East, right? Jacob Pullins High School? Yes. I Symmetry. That's correct. Huh. Yeah. How welcome. about that? There yeah. you go. Tie that together. Did someone just text that to you right now? Like you picked it. up no, your was, phone. I was looking it up. I wanted Did to make Brandon sure. Rush tell you that? <laughs> I wanted to make sure before no, I said it that it was Kurtz, right. if you're talking about that game, just so you know, Javon Carter also went to... Uh, <laughs> Proviso East. Texas Business Cat says, I just remember the quote from Beasley... And he even notes that he's just kind of paraphrasing this. It doesn't matter. We'll beat him here, beat them there, or we'll beat him in Africa. Mm-hmm. Did he? They said the start of the season. It was before this game, right? Like he said, well, it, was it was like in the what, preseason. It was like, in the, it was like, like the day he signed the or yeah, they, something they like led, that. I mean, I watched the beginning of the game. Then they led the broadcast with Beasley on the screen with that quote, with Dave Armstrong, of course. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> so, but it's kind of you know, 
I'd forgotten exactly what he said, but that was the story I think, of the game going into the game. I think as Flanders got his phone going off, probably not <laughs> in a rush. Um, yeah, that was you know that was the big. Uh, I was trying to thought because of that, but but I remember that that I think it was just because you know you have beat, somebody probably told me I haven't beat him in Bramlage ever, and he's like, well, what you know we'll beat him there, and then Lawrence and in Africa yeah. and all that stuff. So. Uh, cat dad times three. I think it's the first time I've seen him post in one of these. So I appreciate that. Just notes that was 11 years ago. Wow. Getting old. So I mean, so think about yep. we have some younger people here like Flanders and Mason, you know, run uh, on the run of the board and Kurtz. It's like to me, that game seems about right. 11 years ago, but yeah, to a I younger agree. person, mm-hmm. yeah, that, does that is. feel like surprising to you guys? That game's 11 years ago. I got a head shake. You don't even yeah, know where you were, Flanders. Do you remember this game no. at all? Okay, that's good. Yeah, just making sure. <laughs> I was somewhere in Michigan. Yeah, no, no, Flanders from Okimos, Michigan. It doesn't seem like Michigan. it was Okimos. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. It doesn't seem like it was that terribly long ago to me. One thing I was going to say was, the way D. Fleur said he was walking around school as a 16-year-old, uh-huh. that was me as a 9-year-old. Oh, you were. Around. I don't know if you can hear Mason off mic, but I think you probably well, still can. Like, yeah, that 9-year-old Mason probably thought he was so cool. If, cool. Now, I will say, if you go find it, on YouTube and watch it, it will seem like 30 years ago because the standard <laughs> it definition, it does, it's, yeah. and it's a bad feed. We not think they must, have, they must have got it off a of VHS yeah. tape or you something. Got, I know Mason's but it, bad at this it's hot just take. how standard definition games look like. They might as well have been in 1955. Right. Totally agree. And when I watch some highlights and watch this clip again, Mason's gonna get mad. You guys might all get mad. I tell you what. Those cat scratch uniforms did not age well with me. <laughs> Those things I thought at the time were awesome. Yeah, they were. Loved them. And yes. oh my gosh. I mean, like, am I wrong? They do not no. look. They do not look no, good. No, those are good late 2000s basketball. Oh, they were awesome late when 2000s. They, when they switched, was yeah. it the same year? Yeah. So the one that had just the very plain, like, striped. That, that, that was yeah. nice. That's, nice. That, held, that held up. That's well, those so were nice. Those were nice. Yeah. Yeah. They wore those in a tournament, I remember. But the cat scratch one I thought was yeah. awesome. And now I'm like, oh boy. Didn't they wear those against Texas? That was the first. Time they warm was against was. Texas that year. I think you're right. And yeah, it, it, was, it was also the era of like the 24 inch inseam shorts. Well, too. that's the thing too. Is you forget how <laughs> it's like like a, huge, <laughs> how huge yeah. the shorts yeah. looked. Like the guys look so much smaller because they're not wearing skin no. tight uniforms. Uh, I'm going to read Neilio's <laughs> post here. He always does a great job of, of chipping with these, which I really appreciate. It says my best friend slash case did alum, who I share football season tickets with, and who I watch hoops with as well, was at a town for it. So many opportunities for people to take Nelson <laughs> I know. to these games. So I got talked into hitting a watch party with other close friends who mostly are made up of KU people, which would have been fun to be around for the record. Let's see what he says. As the game progressed, it was so fun watching all of them start to realize that the NBA talent their team usually throws on the floor simply wasn't good enough against us in our own barn. Towards the end of the game, it wasn't about the Hawks making their comeback. It was their amazement with our crowd losing its mind and storming the court. At that time, most of us were there in the mid to late 30s, so most of us had no recollection of what it was like the last time we beat them in Manhattan. It was all so surreal. For the record, there were eight KU fans at the watch party and not one actual KU fan. They're all Pitt State alums. So so the t-shirt fans that Mason referenced earlier, a fan talked about this crowd. I wasn't in it. Was this crowd noticeably better than some of like the last, like, I mean, just to prepare, compare for me, than some of the last, like, it, this past year's K-State KU game, like noticeably different, way better, or what do you, how could you guys put that in some perspective for a guy like me who wasn't there? Nelson also has no idea, wasn't there. So tell me, and tell I, me and tell me and Nelson about it. I that. think there's, there's something about the energy in the last four to five minutes that was unique. And maybe it's just because we were all so euphoric of beating them at home because there wasn't the it's, nervousness it's, you knew they were it's hard win. to yeah it's hard to say but that that energy was pretty fantastic and you know i i wasn't at this year's game i was at the one when when Poland went off for what 30 i was at that game too that yeah. one was similar because knowing you're going to win the last four minutes is is pretty special not right. going down the last shot is, that was a funny game because i went with our friend ryan the, the crowd Schmidt. really yeah. the crowd i mean just because, I mean, honestly, we haven't beat him that often. The the feeling during those moments is pretty cool. That that's the one thing I remember. I, I don't know if it would be fair to say it was louder that night than it typically is during a Kansas game, but I just remember everyone knew. Obviously, they were rushing the floor, so like the student section, everybody started spilling out into the aisles. I remember on TV noticing that was yeah. very, very. It was very like noticeable. that for a long time because it made the, the crowd look huge because the aisles <laughs> were filled with people. Because again, I mean, they were up double digits for like the last three or four minutes of the game. I mean, it felt like forever. I, just, I remember the end of the game; it felt like forever because it was like, "Look, we're up," but Kansas would hit a three every now and then, like just enough to be annoying. Where you're like, 
and everyone spilled into the aisles. And so I just remember standing like crammed in the aisle of the student section for like five minutes being like, all right, let's just, can we get this thing over so we can just all run out on the floor? I remember, I was, it's not the same game, but that, that Poland game you're referencing, I remember mm-hmm. I sat up with Schmitty and some other friends, Nelson, that you know, like Shelby and Freedom, and I remember having to tell Schmitty, K-State was up 20 the entire second half of that game, I swear, and I kept having to tell him, like, because he was so, and K-State fans, it makes sense here, it's so nervous, but I remember telling him over and over again, like three minutes left, like, it's over, man, K-State's up 21, like, stop fretting about this so much, but... Um, but yeah, did you have a thought you want to share, Nelson? Yeah, the I think it's the stretch that gave us a twelve point lead. I think Poland had a three to put us up ten, and on the next possession, Poland mm-hmm. had the dish to Beasley for the dunk to put us up twelve. After that, I remember hearing on TV thing, and this place is nuts. Yeah, and that- I think it's Armstrong said something, and Splitorf said, "Huh, I can't hear you." Yeah, Not like yeah. in a cheesy. Like way. a legitimate, I really couldn't hear right, him. Right, like he way. legitimately yeah. couldn't hear him. And it, I just remember thinking, holy cow, the roof is going to fall was, off this that place. That was at the 10-minute mark. Yeah. Yeah, we're both going through the, yeah, Poland hits a three with 10.41 left to make it 55-4. I mean, because this game, like, just looking through, obviously it was close for a long time. You know what I mean? Four three-point game. And then that stretch, Poland hits a Make- three. Like you said, uh, dunk on Beasley, go up, to go up 12 at that point, And it never got. They cut it to six with. Six minutes left. Let's scroll through to find the closest one. So yeah, like like Kurtz was saying, there was times where you probably couldn't just say, "Okay, it's over." We'd mm-hmm. be in full celebration mode. They did enough, you know, to make you not sure. Um, got some more here. I want to read from Doug one forty two. From the moment I walked into the building, you could tell the crowd was out for blood. It was a different vibe than any other game I've been to. You had the intensity of a game with two conference contenders, the drama of will we go over, get over the hump like 98 Nebraska in football, and the rivalry factor. The people around us usually cheer politely. were acting like they were back in the student section. My biggest concern was the Cats would come out tight and KU would open the game up with a 10-2 lead or something like that and take the edge off of the crowd, which happened seemingly every time K-State and KU played you know, in this era. Once the Cats were able to land, excuse me, were the team to land the first punch, I really felt like it would be a big surprise if they lost. Our seats were several rows up behind the KU bench, and you could tell that some of their players were clearly intimidated by the crowd. It was a beautiful sight to see, and a few other guys looked like had the deer in the headlight look at times, the way other teams do at their place. When Walker had the run out dunk to ice the place wasn't to ice it, pardon me, the place was insane. Some more thoughts about the crowd there, of course. Um, Ton21 writes that watching game with family and about jumped through the roof knowing we're going to win it. Missed 06 winning an Allen. Who was at that game? Anybody? Were you an Allen in 06? I was an Allen. Yeah. Were you Nelson? Kurtz? No? I was watching at Willie Sports Bar. I was in I was in Allen in 06. I was very excited. This is the first time in his life, Ton25, he was able to see them beat KU in person. Facebook, back in 08, it was Facebook. It was face- Facebook. We were doing Facebook. We weren't doing the Facebook. Twitter. Yeah. yeah. It was silent. No KU fans trying to talk any crap. Just pure purple greatness. I agree. Never two, man. I'm going to read another one here. Kurtz, this is your guy, right? Don't you say you like this guy? Never two? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. He changed. I think he changed. Was his always Ema? He changed his picture, too. It was, I think it was it's Bishop. not Michael Bishop anymore? No. He changed it, too. Jeff, oh well. come on, man. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. It was his sophomore year, so he's a year older than you. Were you saying fraternity? Uh, yeah, the, we were not, but we were in student radio together, and he was, yeah, a year older than me. The buildup outside Bramlage was palpable. D. Young says palpable a lot. That's a D. Young word. As it always <laughs> is. The blackout game the year before was a massive K-I-T-N, kick in the stuff. I was at the blackout game. I remember that. That was my last game before I moved away. And that was cool, but it didn't go very well. <laughs> KU was 20-0 going into this game. I was excited, but also very apprehensive. Did you guys expect K-State to win this game? Do you remember going into mm, it? No, I can expect us to be a team we had sure. in 20-some tries. I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you. I, I can't know. remember either. Uh, he references KU was 20-0 going into it. I was excited, but also very apprehensive. I was trying not to get too emotionally invested in the outcome like I was the year before. He got to sit in the front row of Section 22, Kurtz. So he's sitting in the front row. Josh Freeman was just one section over. I have a super grainy picture of him on a Motorola Razor. Kids today don't know the struggle. When we talked about this. Razors were awesome. Those were nice. They had color, yeah. I agree. I remember thinking the outcome of this game might be different after the first four minutes. As everyone on this board knows, the script to KU and Bramlage became almost too predictable. Our guys come out tight. Clank five of their first seven shots. That seems kind. They were down 11-4 <laughs> before the first media timeout. That didn't happen this time. Blake and Clint knocked down three, so Blake's 
Blake Young did hit a three early in the game. So you weren't so crazy there. Dom had a big block. It was clear our guys were not intimidated. Still angry about Chalmers getting the BS flop call when Bill elbowed him on a clear out. I thought Walker being in foul trouble was going to be one of the game's defining elements. Fortunately, it didn't turn out that way. Bill Walker only played 25 minutes with three fouls. Did he get a lot of... Did Frank get a lot of guff on the board that night? He got we, he put him back in with two and got three in the first half. Then he didn't come in to like the 14-minute yeah. mark of the second half. I think uh, it was. Gotta play him, you know. Um, it started to set in when Beasley had the jam to put us up 12 minutes through the second half that Nelson just referenced about the 10-minute mark where that fan looked up. Although I don't think I felt truly comfortable until Walker's breakaway dunk towards the end of regular, regulation, which I think was what Kurt kind of said. You thought the Walker dunk felt like it kind of sealed it, maybe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember rushing the floor, but I don't remember... I remember rushing the floor, but I don't remember rushing the floor, if that makes sense. It doesn't, because I just read it. It was very confusing. <laughs> I know I know what you mean. Um, actually, we all knew it was going to happen. When the clock hit triple zeros, I just hopped the gate and ran on the floor. I don't remember much after that point. It says, I really overlooked Poland's 20-point performance. That's the guy who the jersey looked super baggy on. <laughs> yes. Poland was the one that wore a big T-shirt and well, a big... Poland Pol- and Blake Young. I always thought Blake Young's shorts looked like they went... Right. Like, you know, they were capris. Absolutely. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Loose capris. I really overlooked Poland again. The night seemed like it belonged to Beasley and Walker. I was dumb and young and really had no concept of what Jake's effort meant. He was so crucial in that game. Another thing dumb 20-year-old me overlooked was that game making us 5-0 and in Big 12 play. I wasn't even thinking about a Big 12 title, but it was totally there for the taking. In hindsight, I think about what could have been with that team if they had a little more maturity or experience. Well said, yeah. Even so, it was an amazing night. Doubt I'll attend a game like that for the rest of my life. That's a really good post. He still has Bishop as his signature picture at the bottom, but you can't see the never two on his wristbands. And I really like his his avatar. It's Ema with the old like 1980s that fan shirt, Willie, which mm-hmm. is awesome. It's a great avatar, but still it's making me start over. Um, not reading this. Not the fake MV. I'm not going to read that. <laughs> um, he just says he. What's he going to say? Like, he, oh, he, this I was guy like says Gaga. I wore my way <laughs> too big. Michael Beasley, black cat scratch jersey school that day. In fourth grade, he was talking tons of smack. I would love to know what Mason did. Yeah. <laughs> you know he. You know Mason walked in, huge grin on his face, and he tried to not say something. So, but, but immediately, like you know, first class. Anybody, anybody see that game last night? Anybody watch that? Oh, you see that? Anybody watch it? You know, uh, Scott Wildcat says his memory is that he was very happy. Alex S seventeen says he got in line at six a.m. It was like five degrees outside. My group was probably cut by fifty to seventy-five people. When they decided to reorganize the Thank line. Thank you. Yeah. You were probably you in his group. You are so effing right. You guys were probably yes. friends. And then I lost the blanket that my wife, then his girlfriend, made me for Christmas. Mm. She's still mad about it. She should be. I mean. <laughs> Could have caused their fist fight. Or- I, will, I, will, I will say, if, if I was in college and my girlfriend made me a blanket for Christmas, though, I mean, like... That's a whole other topic, but I might. I was thinking that one. Yeah, uh, game was awesome. Crowd was awesome. Storming the court was awesome. Although I'm glad I didn't fall because I'd have been trampled to death. <laughs> Lose your blanket, get trampled. It's a tough day, you know. Midtown thirteen. I've been worse than the chicken wing. Oh man, now that was one I love to get on Facebook back in the Facebook days and make fun of the chicken wing anger. I loved all the all the people mm-hmm. being so upset about that. It was the angriest basketball crowd I can remember. Kind of like the 98 Nebraska football games basketball equivalent. KU was awesome that year, and they were so sped up and out of their element. Poland was a hero. His first real breakout game. Midtown 13. Last one on this, and I want to ask you guys another question or two about the game I want to hear your answers on. Before we wrap up this edition of KSO Retro, I want to hear some more basketball memories for sure. Immaculate Conception is always very helpful in responding to these threads. Um, the police were touring the parking lot at 3 a.m. We were hiding in the bushes. So this is one of your guys. This I is one of your guys. You. I told you. <laughs> yep. God, I nailed 4 this. 4 a.m., I'm pretty <laughs> sure. 3 a.m., though, that's... I mean, 3 a.m., yeah, that's right. That's hey, you got to give him his credit. I mean, he deserves. <laughs> at 4 a.m., they opened the gates, and it was a mad dash to the line. We were about third in line, decimating the sprint. Decimating in the sprint. Uh, college-aged Ema Killick Conception was in better shape, and I camped out in line the entire day. My friends went to class and took notes, brought me lunch, etc. I still vividly remember the players bringing out pizza to those of us in line. Did you skip class that day, Kurtz? Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, of course. You See, and listen, now, Nelson, remember that little argument we had on the last episode of the KSO show? This is a guy who doesn't value a college oh, education. <laughs> so now, we all, now we all understand why. Yep. We all understand why he feels. The truth, the truth oh, comes out. We understand why he feels the way he feels. 
Also, it was bloody cold and I ended up getting a pneumonia from the debacle, <laughs> but it was totally worth it. Hey, so that's got to be relief to you. This guy who hid in the bushes and stole your spot probably cut you, got pneumonia. See, if I thought the, the one I remember being really cold, I'm sure it was cold, but that t- the Texas game that year was worse. Big Monday Texas game, and then we got our ass kicked. I don't remember that game either. I was just out of town, man. Yeah, it was it was brutal. Yep. They were terrible. He goes on. We ended up first and first in the second row, about ten of us, and the game was tense. Not sure I ever really knew we'd win until near the end of regulation. You could feel the crowd start to shift for the court storming. My feet were lifted off the ground. And I was propelled all the way to the court, the court, pardon me, independent of my effort. I recall Beasley on the table and just how energetic and crowded the place was. Yeah, that's, I mean, for somebody who wasn't there and who watched it on TV, um, that was the image. You know, mm-hmm. seeing Beasley doing yeah. that and, and other players, but still. So uh, I have a question I want to ask you guys. It's a very loaded question. And we'll probably wrap it up. It's a relatively short edition. Basketball is different. It's tough to just sit there. We could and go mm-hmm. like, you know, football's drive by drive here. We could just say, oh. Brandon Rush made three-pointer. Oh, Clint Stewart made three-pointer, you know. So we're not going to do that. But I would ask you guys a loaded question and talk as long or as short as you want. How meaningful was this win for K-State basketball? We do all these retros and we talk about this 98 Nebraska or 03 Oklahoma or all these games that are, you know, so important. Like, where does this one fall? I'm not telling you you have to say it's number one or number two or whatever. But, like, 10 years after the fact, 11 years after the fact, how meaningful do you think this win was? And where does it rank among some of the great wins you've experienced as a K-State fan. Kurtz, we'll go with you first. I'm inclined to say number one. Number um, one. In my, in my lifetime. Um, because it was just something I never thought I would see at that point. And, you know, Wooly snapping, like, the overall yeah. streak, you would, I mean, I understand how you would argue that that's more important. But that team also you knew wasn't going anywhere, really. Th- this was such an exciting time the culmination of that whole recruiting class and at least for me like the message board era surrounding that was just insane like how Mm -hmm. fun it was it gave it legitimacy and it gave you something you had never experienced before and the party that ensued because it was actually at k-state and there was the build-up to the game and then the release i i think to me it still holds up because it was also kind of the arrival of this new era of K-State basketball. No doubt. That was really like the first big-time win that they had. I mean, they were obviously pretty good the Huggins year and probably should have made the tournament. Right. But this was a team that had higher-profile players, was definitely better, and went out and beat the eventual national champs and led Sports Center that night with all of it. I, I think, to me, it still holds up as, in my lifetime, the, the most significant. And it's just one game, but if you want to argue how important it was, you know, and the benefit, we're talking 11 years later, K-State's winning the Big 12 and beating KU at home. You know, for the second time, they've won the Big 12 since that game. 11 years prior, you know, in 1997, K-State wasn't, you know, wasn't doing a lot. Well, I mean, so, so the it, 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 yeah, so I think your point stands. I mean, it certainly was a big. Let me argue block. this, too, in retrospect. That team was an 11 seed in the tournament. I know. If they don't win that game. They may not have yeah. got in. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I mean, fascinating. Yeah, that's that's a whole different topic. Nelson, no, same thing. Like, just think back to how much did this mean to you? Die Hard, all you guys are. But Die Hard K-State fan your whole life, you know, always a huge basketball guy. Never experienced him beating KU and Bramlage. Like, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, as far as regular season wins, it definitely ranks still number one for me. Um, when you're looking to the overall impact, um, you know, you think back, a lot is made of the, the 1988 game oh, yeah. in the lead eight and the the pass the two programs took from that game and you know it didn't have that big of an impact the other way because obviously KU continued to sure. be what they were but K-State from that point forward has been a different program than they were like Kurt said the, the previous decade and you just think I mean just two three years ago I mean in 2005 2004 we're thinking man we're so close to making the NIT you know Wool is going to turn the corner we're so <laughs> close that would go, have turned it around, okay? If that had happened, this program would be five years further along. We'd have the NIT banner hanging up. I'm sorry to cut you off, but it was, it was heartbreaking. And, and I know, obviously, being at K-State, he didn't get the publicity. But, I mean, you think how big Zion, will it, Zion was this year? I mean, right. that was Michael Beasley. I mean, Michael Beasley was every bit as good as a college player. As, His as college Zion. numbers oh, yeah. were as good as right. anybody. Or Durant. Or, yeah. And so, that for K-State, to have that and to have all the excitement around it was 
yeah, it was it was amazing. I know I've put in a bad spot with him going before you, but still, same question. Like, just what does this game mean to you? What do, what do you what do you want to talk about? What do you think about when when this game comes up? Well, I think part of it was part of the significance is how good KU was. Definitely coming into the game, and then you know, obviously winning the national title that year. Derrick Rose, Mr. Rose. Efficiency wise, it was their worst defensive game of the year. I mean, KU's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, K State kind of took them apart more than. And that's when Bill Self teams defensively were much better. I mean, on a national scale, they're still good, but back then they were dominant. Yep. And uh, to to beat them by scoring and by having the best player on the floor, by uh, rebounding them, being more athletic, out rebounding them, um, to win it in the way we won it was. And then I think just to get that win and be a good team. Yeah, kind of. I don't want to discredit the Wooly, but everybody knew we weren't very good. It's kind of a fluke. This was not a fluke, and I think that took pressure off the rest of Frank's teams and even in the Bruce of getting over that hump of beating KU. I mean, we had never beat him in Bramlage. I mean, that's hard to imagine. It was 2008. We still hadn't beat him in Bramlage. <laughs> I mean, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it really it is. is. It's, it's really embarrassing it, to 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 reach that point, but. You know, that was, what, 90, 89? Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. almost 20 yeah, years. I'd rather not talk about it. I mean, it was, I mean, it was, I mean yeah. that's I remember games in the Roy Williams era where Roy would be pissed because they were only at six, so we'd go five for five and put in his walk-ons, and their six-point lead yes. would go to 14 yeah, yeah. with I mean, their was, walk-ons on the floor. Yeah. I mean, oh. the, only, the, only, the only close one was Sean Rhodes missed a three late. Yeah. I, mean, that, uh, I know exactly. It. That game Steve I remember Perry so in vividly. early years. Like, because I remember that game – the one you're talking about when K- yeah. it had been like 95, 94, yeah. something like that. Mid-90s. Because K-State was getting blown out from the start, and I turned it off and went and played shot baskets in Galva and came back just in time to turn it on and watch Manny Dice, who also had like an open 12-footer on that yeah. play, toss this pass back to Sean Rhodes and open three, and I'm like, watch, like, they're going to win. <laughs> We're going to win. I was going to get so, – and then, of course – course nothing and the 06 one like you guys bring up was fun like i was there i loved it yeah but you guys made such great points like it felt a little hollow because you knew k-state wasn't good and, and it wasn't just it was, right maybe just the worst loss one, ever nebraska. to nebraska <laughs> just lost by one million to nebraska um i remember <laughs> that like 40 points at home <laughs> and that was nebraska. when i remember josh freeman had just picked k-state over nebraska and josh freeman is like in the front row in the student section <laughs> watching k-state nebraska basketball and i remember nebraska beating by a thousand and then i never told the story to anybody i don't think i've ever said this and then freeman who i think didn't understand my role at k-state like i think he thought i was working for k-state or something like that texted me and tell me he hadn't signed. He's like, he hadn't signed his financial aid agreement or something like that yet, so it wasn't quite official. And he texted me, he's like, "Oh, I gotta go home for a couple of days. I left my wallet at home." And I remember thinking, "That's a weird thing to text me." And I remember thinking, "He's gonna go home and not come back." And like, of course, he came back and everything like that. But I remember thinking, and I never shared that. Like, I didn't even go on the board. I never went on anywhere and said, "Hey, Freeman went home." <laughs> and he's not, you know, I mean, like for a weird reason. Like they couldn't bring him his wallet. They couldn't do that kind of stuff. He came. He came back. He went to K State and that kind of stuff. But I was convinced in my young head that he didn't want to be here anyway. And he just lost Nebraska in basketball, not even football. Right, you yeah. know, beat him by forty, yeah. and now he's going to leave. But it was def- definitely someone else's fault that he lost his wallet. I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, Nelson, <laughs> oh, take it. Wow. Uh, any chance wow. Nelson gets to take it, a, t- a take shot at a K-State quarterback <laughs> on the K-State <laughs> show. Take it the quarterback. He's going to do. We can't not do it. Um, but I want to thank you guys for participating um, because you guys carried all this because like you were there. You experienced it one way or another. I really appreciate that. I want to thank all the posters for sharing their thoughts on it. Uh, I want to thank all guys. Tap House, of course. Harry's, Bourbon and Baker. Flanders, thanks for running the board. Mason, thanks for yelling from the side. Guys, is there... I mean, it's a, such an important game. Is there something you wanted to talk about with this game that we didn't come up that you wanted to say? I don't want to leave that stone unturned. If there was a topic you wanted, I'm seeing nothing, which is fine. This isn't a trick question. I, I'm I do happy. want to say, okay, get it out there. The, the point that that we made that we were five and zero, oh, and even we were eight and two with and what, what six K-State, games what left. What K State finish at eight? We finished ten and six. We lost four games in a row to Nebraska. I was at that game in Lincoln. Yeah. That was awful. Terrible. We lost to Baylor at their place. Then the Texas game on Monday, which I don't know how we lost that game, were terrible. And then at Lawrence when they beat us by 14. I remember watching that. Well, that was only a 14 point game. Yeah. I remember watching it was, that. It seemed like a lot worse. I, remember, I watched BG that game. Was, I was basically oh, like 40. Like 40. I watched that game start to finish because I was off that day from Rivals. 
and I remember being pretty excited about it. I remember thinking, if you'd asked me the final score, I would have guessed KU by 30. It felt like they won that game. And I knew Beasley had about 40, but I, it felt like KU won that game by terrible nine. early fouls called on Walker. Shocking. Uh, yeah. Bees and Walker. Yeah. Shocking. Uh, I don't have a comment about this game directly, but more just about Beasley in that year. Does anybody remember the Nebraska game when Nebraska played a triangle in two? Mm-hmm. And not like on Beasley and Walker. They two played a triangle in two with two on Beasley. Michael Beasley. Yes. A Division One college basketball yes. team. Think about this. A Division One awesome. college basketball team played a triangle in two <laughs> with two guys on one player. That's... That will never happen again, I don't think, or probably never has happened before. It wouldn't happen. To the I, man, and that, and that was in real. And I was at, at being at that game. That was was it the game we, in we, Lincoln we, or the game in the one, the game in Lincoln. And it worked, I guess. We right? talked. I mean, we, well, so. we talked about that team being immature. They really melted down down the stretch in that game. I mean, we were in the game. It was close. I think that Merritt guy had like 40 against Who's Nebraska's coach in back in 08? That was, Wasn't it Sadler? Doc oh, that was, oh, it probably was. That was, was. Uh, who, was going to guard Marich? Oh, that was the... Oh, which the, was yeah. like the, the meme <laughs> it was of a messy, KSU fans. It was a mess. That, it still is, whatever. I think. Anybody out there listening right now who gets that joke, who's going to guard Marich? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're my kind of people. Yes. I don't know. It, and I <laughs> yes. feel really out of the loop for it. I really it was, wish I it was. It was awesome. I looked at Go Emon stuff back then too. Like I'm aware of it, but not as aware as I should have been. Like oh, it, was it was a good time. It was so, the best. Uh, big thanks to KSU fan, to Nelson, to Kurtz, to everyone who posted. Appreciate it. This will wrap up KSO Retro K State KU 2008. Please do us one thing, and that is to t- tire first.